Tonight, we light the Christ candle. Isn't Christmas wonderful? I love the visuals at Christmas, the shepherds, the angels, magi, gifts, music, lights, stars. I heard about a young African boy who listened intently as the missionary teacher explained why Christians give presents to each other on Christmas Day. She said, they are an expression of our joy over the birth of Jesus and our love for one another. When Christmas came, the boy brought the teacher a very beautiful seashell. Where did you find such a shell? She asked him. He told her how there was only one spot several miles away where they could be found. Well, you shouldn't have gone all that way to, to get a gift just for me, she said. His eyes brightened as he said, long walk was part of gift. God has given us the gift of love. He proclaims God so loved the world that he gave, well, you know what he gave. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. It tells us in John 3.16. Jesus is the Father's gift of love to you. The cost, which we will never fully know, but it includes the cross. It's a part of the gift. This Christmas, my gift to you is to remind you that you are loved. God loves you so much that Jesus left the perfection and peace of heaven to come to earth as a baby in a manger so he could die as the Lamb of God on the cross for your sins and mine. That's love. That's the best gift you could ever receive. Let me share one more Christmas story with you. An author named Bret Hart wrote a story about the Wild West called The Luck of Roaring Camp. Roaring Camp was the meanest, toughest mining town in all the West. There were more murders and thefts than any other place around. Roaring Camp was inhabited entirely by men, except for one woman, who made her living the only way she knew how. Her name was Cherokee Sal. Eventually, Cherokee Sal became pregnant and gave birth to a baby. She died in childbirth, and no one knew who the father might be. The men put the baby girl in an old wooden box with some old rags under her. Somehow that just didn't seem right. So one of the men rode 80 miles to buy a rosewood cradle. When they put the rags and the baby in the beautiful new cradle, <laughs> the rags just didn't look right. So another man rode to Sacramento and purchased some silk and, and some lacy blankets and the men lined the rosewood cradle with silk and, and tucked the new banquet around the little baby girl. But someone noticed that the, the floor under the cradle looked dirty and the next thing you knew the, a few of those big tough men got down on their knees and their hands and they scrubbed the floor until it was spotless. Of course, and the walls and the ceiling and, and the dirty windows, they looked awful. So they washed down the, the walls and the ceiling. And they even hung some clean white windows on the window, wind, shades on the windows. And things were starting to look a lot better. But they soon realized that they had to give up their carousing and their fighting. After all, the baby needed a lot of sleep and babies can't sleep during a brawl. Besides all that, the baby didn't like angry voices or frowning faces, so the men started smiling and talking in pleasant, cheerful tones. And since babies shouldn't be left alone, they set the cradle by the entrance of the mind, and one of the men stayed next to her while the others worked. Then someone noticed how ugly the mine entrance was. So they planted some flowers and made a small garden near the cradle. And as they worked, the men looked for shiny little stones that they could show to the baby and, 
and watch her gurgle and coo. But when they, they held the stones down near her, they saw that their hands looked black and dirty, and, and they didn't want to scare the little baby with their scraggly hair and wild beards. Pretty soon the general store was sold out of all the soap and shaving gear that they had. The baby changed everything. And that story gives a small picture of the way the Son of God can transform our lives. Jesus is, is in the life-changing business. Have you allowed him to change your life? This Christmas receive the gifts that God has for you. Forgiveness of sin, salvation from hell, and an empty life, eternal life in paradise. Enjoy the parties and all of the hoopla. It's a, it's a celebration. We are celebrating the best gifts possible. We're celebrating Christmas. God bless. Merry Christmas.